Hi, I'm Felix. Hi, I'm Allison. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a part of the marketing and communications team at MIT Admissions. In light of everything that's happening in the world right now, we thought it'd be fitting to ask students about any social impact work that they're doing. So we wanted to shed light on the amazing community of MIT students working to help change the world for better. And here are their stories. Hey, my name is Mojo and I'm a rising junior here at MIT. Hi, my name is Sarah Akalazzi and I am a rising junior studying biological engineering. Hello, my name is Ashni Shah. I'm from the class of 2022 and I'm double majoring in electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. I'm Andrew Seelhoff. I am a rising junior in course two. My name is Isabella. I am a sophomore at MIT studying biological engineering. Hello, I'm Hoi Mostri, MIT class of 2022. I'm a double major in computer science and mathematics. Um, hi, uh, my name is Jess and right now I am the co-chair of MIT Divest. Hi, my name is Arnav Patel. I am a rising senior at MIT studying mechanical engineering. I am one of the co-chairs for MIT Divest. Uh, hi, my name is Peter Scott. I'm a co-lead in the outreach subgroup of MIT Divest. Hi, my name is Yu Cheng. Right now I'm working on some things particularly related to Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I'm a part of MIT Crew, which is one of the Christian communities on campus. And through Crew, I'm organizing and facilitating um, discussion within the community, um, particularly regarding racial injustice. I've held some discussions to allow people to just come together as a community and just unpack some of the systemic racism that we've been complicit in, unpack some of the thoughts that we've held in. And I'm also working on a fundraiser called Black Lives Matter, a cultural movement. And this is a fundraiser on custom ink. So I designed a shirt and I created a custom ink fundraiser where people can um, buy shirts and all the proceedings will go to the Equal Justice Initiative and the National Black Women's Justice Initiative. Um, particularly the main focus of that fundraiser is to just remind people that um, the whole Black Lives Matter thing is not just a moment in 2018 that got trendy for a while and then ultimately died down and everything went back to normal. But rather, this is a movement. And sometimes for some people, lifestyles, entire lifestyles are gonna have to change. The way people approach things, the way people think about things um, are gonna have to change. Like basically life is gonna have to change. There's no real going back to normal because the current normal so far has just been oppressive to <laughs> black people really. So I just want to remind people that this is a cultural movement. Like we are shifting culture into a system that is not um, promoting racist agendas and such. Black Lives Matters movement, for example, is like, I mean, first of all, I am black, so this automatically affects me no matter what. But second of all, this country has just been deeply rooted in racism in many of its systems. So I guess that's also like what activism means for me. It's just living, basically. <laughs> I think, first of all, one needs to care. Like, you can fight all you want, you can donate as much money as you want, but at the end of the day, if you don't care, then what are you really fighting for? Like, what are you really doing with your time? You know, is your heart really invested? And I think caring is very important because there's so much we can do with our money. We can change systems, we can change legislation, that's great and all, but at the end of the day, life comes down to interacting with people. And we are the people and we have to care. Our hearts have to really change. Our hearts have to truly be for the cause in order to affect people's lives. You really have to just acknowledge the mistakes you had made previously, acknowledge some of the thoughts that you may not have enjoyed in the past and just come out of that and be ready to be, you know, open into a new world with, in which you're humbled, in which you are meek, in which you acknowledge that you may have had some previous ideologies that may not sit with you right now. But the beauty of that is that, you know, it's a journey. You're not expected to be perfect in order to fight for something. A light of recent events regarding the Black Lives Matter movement, me, my roommate, and another friend has decided to create a small project called MIT Drawn Together, where we take art requests for donations. So 
we this originally started as a sticker project however i brought about the idea from hearing from a couple of my other friends that it would be really cool if we decided to draw digital art for people who donate to um, organizations so this was originally just going to start as a small project we first dorm spammed to every dorm we know and also try to pub to other clubs as well in order to get the word that we were starting this project and then post on our instagram and then yeah slowly we had more artists wanting to join us and it was really cool to see that we're even still doing it now and still getting commissions um the reason why i personally started was because ever since um george floyd and brianna taylor and so many other unfortunate events i just felt like it was time to actually like put myself out there i've always been aware of all the system um all the systematic racism the violence the police brutality and all and i have always been somewhat outspoken however this has been the first time i've actually like created a small project in order to do some, something substantial and concrete. So I really wanted to play my part to support something I truly believe in, which is um, equality for all people, including Black people. I guess it was just my environment. I have a lot of friends and we always have discussions about racism, LGBTQ rights, etc. cetera. And um, I just started educating myself. Um, and after learning about the situations, learning and speaking to all different sorts of people, um, I felt like I also wanted to play my role in order to support the Black community because I just really want to support in any way I can. And I think that passion to do something is what drove me to get into activism. Um, activism is the act of going out to support uh, whatever you believe in. So that could be in the form of donations, signing petitions, protesting, posting on social media, using your platform, just drawing, having uncomfortable conversations with people, educating. I think all of that is under the bubble of activism. To me, I think the first steps is education. For you to go out and actively try to bring about change. I think you yourself also have to be educated about the issues and understanding of what exactly whatever you're supporting entails. So I think the first steps in activism is educating yourself and then going out and spreading that education towards others. Also, if you want to um, support the MIT Drawn Together, find us on Instagram and get an art request for just donating a recommended amount, about $25. My parents both have polio, and I spent many years noting which buildings have ramps, which locations have elevators, how well businesses did with clearing snow from parking lots, and I've trained myself over years and years to look for signs indicating handicap accessibility for travel routes, for parking spaces, and for handicap accessible bathrooms. When I came to MIT, I became involved with Terrascope, a first year learning community on campus that challenged my class to understand and propose solutions for the lack of water security in the Navajo Nation, a very underserved and underrepresented my community in the United States. Terrascope is a breeding ground for environmental and social activists. And after that experience in the Navajo Nation, even though I had no idea what I would have been doing when I signed up for Terrascope in the first place, I found my, within myself an inculcated drive to understand and be cognizant of everyday inequalities. And I found myself pushing harder and harder to try to find paths and resolution for all these inequalities that I was seeing, regardless of all the obstacles that I just kept seeing in the way. My current project is working to expand quality healthcare access to underserved communities in Mexico with a specific focus on providing prolonged healthcare to people living with chronic conditions. My role in the project is to design an ADA compliant vehicle that is fully equipped to fit amputee patients with new prosthetics 
as well as assist with navigating other elements of their care. It is imperative that accessibility to health care and other public services is a right, not a luxury. My parents endure daily struggles with mobility, and that is why I am so proud to be part of a project that empowers amputee patients who would otherwise struggle with everyday activities. Activism means being so passionate about a topic that staying silent is impossible and standing up for what you know is right becomes necessary. It is the ability to engage in difficult conversation with people outside your community and always staying vigilant and being prepared to have your ideas challenged. It means mobilizing an effort to create a massive database of statistics, resources, and firsthand experiences to support your cause. Activism means having a clear goal and a plan and a strategy for accomplishing that goal. The first steps in activism, I think there are three. One, accept and face your own biases. It is difficult to accept that you have them, but the, the sooner you face them, the sooner you can overcome them and the sooner you can help other people recognize their inherent and implicit biases. Two, understand that the language you use matters. And three, your body language matters. Both your language and your body language will communicate how confident you are in your message and they will affect how people listen to you. And the sooner you understand and are fully comfortable with using sensitive language and projecting a confident body language, the faster people will listen to you and the faster you can get a movement started. Connect with activists in your community. It is the easiest and fastest way to get involved. These people have been in the fight for much longer than you have. And I assure you that every single one of them would be ecstatic to teach you everything that they know and to have you on board as part of the team to try to get a policy passed or try to change something in your community. People will always find time to talk to you. You just have to take that first step and reach out. And then otherwise, read news articles, listen to podcasts, follow local activists on social media. The faster you immerse yourself in the culture, the better of an activist for that cause you will be. Mainly, I've been, to, to start with an amputee myself, but I've been involved in the amputee community and helping with trying to help improve the quality of insurance for amputees because there's a lot of issues with just covering prosthetic limbs and not just the coverage itself, but like the, the, the quality of the limbs that are provided. And essentially like I've gone in the past a few times to uh, Washington DC to lobby for insurance fairness for amputees, meeting with like senators and congressmen to just kind of just provide a voice for the community because there's a lot of, or there's a, a large lack of coverage for the higher end prosthetic limbs, which are not only safer to use, but just provide a much higher quality of life for amputees. I guess after becoming, after my amputee myself, I kind of just started to learn about how, you, you know, it just seemed like a, when first, like after being an amputee, that would be like pretty easy to get back into walking and things. And I guess generally it was, but there's a lot of just hurdles along the way between dealing with insurance and coverage. Like for example, the current like prosthetic leg I have was not covered by insurance because it's like a uh, air quotes, higher end microprocessor need, which has a lot of features that help it like through control it up, make it safer and just overall a uh, much higher quality experience. But usually insurance only covers a basic mechanical need. So after running into this, um, just this issue, I wanted to find a way to try and help fix it. And I was once I got into the amputee community a bit, some people said you should go lobbying. And every year there's a few organizations that go to Capitol Hill and lobby specifically for this. Kind of cheesy to say it's just making a difference, but that's really what it boils down to. It's like finding something that you can actively make a difference in and like improve the lives of others through using your experience.
working a lot with uh, Mujeres Latinas. It's a Hispanic group on campus that really encourages and supports uh, women in STEM, especially minorities and those of the Black and Latinx communities. We do a lot of events and meetings where we talk about global events involving women, um, especially in Hispanic countries. Um, a lot of women don't have equal opportunities there and we want to bring light to that. And then also show how there are still similarities within the US today um, and that we are able to help solve these issues even within our own campus. And so with that, we often also take in questions from MIT students um, in other communities within like Lobby 7 or Lobby 10. We like take those questions that they have and help uh, talk about how we can improve uh, life for women and minorities in STEM. Uh, and then we also just have uh, fun games that we can play with other members to help foster interest in our activities um, in our club. We have a lot of great food as well. Um, and then we do uh, have a lot of uh, meetings and retreats <laughs> to get to see stuff around Boston or to be able to provide a lot of community service back to the cities of Boston and Cambridge, not only allowing to help women in STEM like at the collegiate level, but also within high schools and within um, other parts of the community as well. Uh, another club that I'm involved in is Colleges Against Cancer. Um, we're a group that fundraises. We have an annual what we call Relay for Life and all the money that we take from these fundraisers goes towards the American Cancer Society for working towards finding a cure for cancer. And we do a lot of this by raising awareness about um, how research uh, for cancer is at its current point as well as ways that we can within our small campus as well of uh, improving resources uh, for those affected by cancer. I really do think that women and minorities should have equal access to STEM activities, that there should be a lot of focus on helping those who are underrepresented and don't have those opportunities to be able to have equal opportunities the same as everyone else. I think it's a great way to bring not only new opportunities to others but also bring new opportunities to the fields of science and technology um, and all the things that we're involved with. By engaging other people, um, we're bringing in a whole bunch of new perspectives that otherwise would have been looked over. And I think it's really important to engage not only everybody for that reason, but also just to be inclusive and accept everybody for who they are. Um, and that's something I'm just super passionate about and I'm really excited that I'm able to work on this with an amazing group of other people as well. So it was a lot about like learning to express your opinions. I didn't talk out super much before college about what I um, support, um, but being able to be part of these um, activism groups really has given me my own voice and allowed me to figure out what I like to talk about a lot and what I really like to promote uh, with my friends, my peers, as well as with um, the organizations that I'm involved with. So being part of activism groups really provides me a sense of identity as well. Recently, I have started a YouTube channel where I bring in other young women who are pursuing a career in the STEM fields. So, and I ask them questions through which they relate their experiences as a young woman in STEM. Um, there are many reasons why I started this initiative. Uh, while in high school, right, I used to take part in several math competitions. But whenever I used to attend these uh, qualifiers for international competitions or regional camps for national uh, competitions, I was often the only girl in the classroom or maybe one of two or three girls at best. Uh, so when I finally got the opportunity to represent India at the European Girls Math Olympiad, I was overwhelmed to see so many other girls in that competition. So before that experience, if people had told me that girls did not do math or math was not for girls, somewhere deep down, I could have believed them because I had not seen many other girls in the, uh, the math uh, camps or the math qualifiers. So I realized that it's very important that girls in their early on in their career get exposed to the fact that there are many other girls out there who are pursuing the sciences as a career. Uh, who are stalwarts in the STEM fields, who are the next generation of leaders, the future leaders of the STEM fields. And it's totally okay for a girl to love math or the other sciences. And it's very, very important that girls know that there are other girls out there who love the sciences just like them, who can be great at what they are doing and inspire them, you know? So 
I thought that starting a YouTube channel would be a great way to bring these stories to the thousands of young women who are out there waiting for some sort of an inspiration to do what they already love to do or maybe just realize that they actually love to do it and it's okay no matter whoever says what no matter whether someone says that they can't do it because they're a girl because they can others are doing it uh, they can be the next great leader in the sciences they can revolutionize the stem fields so that is why i actually started the youtube channel for me activism is bringing about a positive change in the world especially a positive change in the mindset of the world and that is why i have started the youtube channel and i really really hope that it brings about a positive effect um, in the mindset even if a very little change even if a very little po positive change i would be really grateful if even if one person gets inspired from my initiative our goal is to get MIT to remove its investments from the fossil fuel industry, specifically companies involved in um, anti-climate lobbying, climate disinformation, and those who are uh, still developing oil and gas reserves past the 2 degrees Celsius limit. Um, we also want to push MIT in general to take more strides in terms of climate action and transparency as well as uh, also listen to student voices more on uh, environmental issues and environmental justice. Um, I'm also involved with the College Climate Coalition, which is a group of around 50 to 60 environmental activism related organizations on college and higher ed campuses that are committed to climate action and trying to put more pressure on our institutions as a whole uh, to be better in this regard. I've also just recently gotten started with the Boston Hub of Sunrise, which is a movement of young people focused on fighting to stop the climate crisis, and they do a lot of cool things as well. Um, in terms of being at home, I've been doing a bit more organizing uh, for uh, issues like police brutality and system, uh, systemic uh, racism in school districts and the kinds of uh, ways that my town's budget is being spent, so I've uh, been doing a bit of that now as well. I started doing what I'm currently working on because I feel very passionate about environmental justice and, and related topics and I feel like people in power and institutions have an obligation to do a lot more than they currently are. Uh, so I really wanted to be a part of that movement and the people that uh, are pushing for that kind of change. I've also always kind of been uh, passionate about environmental issues. But at, uh, in college, I've come to really realize how um, important advocacy is and activism uh, in terms of policy spaces and ensuring that um, institutions and people with more power are being held accountable. Um, and so I find that kind of work really inspiring and, and motivating. If any of these issues like climate justice or environmental issues or trying to hold fossil fuel companies responsible and accountable sounds interesting to you, um, MIT Divest would love for you to reach out to us um, at mitdivestleads at mit.edu with any questions or if you just have a general interest. I got involved with this campaign early on because I felt that the school needed to do more to embody the mission and values associated with science and the teaching of science. And I was already involved in pursuing sustainability and energy related activities in and out of school at that point. To me, I think true activism is twofold. It's participating in a public movement that consolidates the many voices that are demanding change, but it's also a solutions-oriented activity to actually provide methods and policies to change the way things are. I think that the first steps in activism, I really do think it's quite simple. It's, it's realizing that you think things need to change and you're willing to put work towards that change. And I think it's simple as that, because if you truly believe that that change is needed, you end up kind of continuing onto a path that uh, allows you to join the communities and people dedicated to pushing those types of positive agendas forward. Uh, and what we're working on right now is um, extending, uh, is extending our reach to as many groups in the MIT community as possible. Uh, this includes alumni, staff, faculty, um, professors, members of the MIT Corporation and administration, um, and you know, students, and basically anyone who is connected to MIT. Um, the reason that I got into um, this 
you know, um, this type of activism is because I think that communication is key in any movement. Um, and especially in Divest, where, you know, you're looking at a community full of different people um, who might have different questions about what we're doing. And, you know, what we're, we're just trying to get as many people on board as possible. And I think that the more people you have, um, you know, it grows your chances of success exponentially. Um, at MIT, I'm involved with a lot of different advocacy streams, um, primarily the first gen low income community and advocacy through that, as well as the Asian American um, advocacy on campus. I actually started MIT's first Asian American advocacy group um, called the Asian American Initiative, um, and we've done a lot of different projects thus far. Um, and I'm really passionate generally just about diversity, equity, and inclusion on campus, and I'm always working to be, become a better ally. Um, and one of my very first projects, that's, that's what I'll tell you about, um, something that's very special to me is this project called Reclaimed. My first year on campus um, with my friend Delapo, we created this photo mural around the pillars of Lobby 7 for International Migrants Day. And it featured nearly 100 students holding these signs with their names and their traditional languages and the meanings of those names. And um, really goes to, goes to instill pride within the community and in reclaiming the, their names, something so integral to their identities, um, and reclaiming and loving their culture in which they come from. Um, and that's really what drove the project. And here, uh, I kind of want to show you guys um, what my name means. So my name is Yujing. Um, it means crystal jade. Um, and this is Delapo who um, helped create this project. Um, activism is something that's really important to me because equity is something I'm very passionate about. Um, I grew up in the city of Chicago and growing up in a city like that, you just grew up to so many amazing advocates and activists and communities coming together to fight for change. Um, and it's really inspired me to, to this day. Um, and honestly, there's just so many different ways in which one can make change and to see all of that happening around you, it really empowers you and really gets you thinking that you can do it too. Um, and that's something I really want to inspire in my work as well. Um, that like I, that mentality that you can do it. There's nothing that should be holding you back. If there's something you care about, I'm um, gonna change you want to make. Just do it. Um, and just seeing the different avenues in which that they, that can take. Because there's not one single way to do activism. There's not one right way to make change. Um, it takes in the form of slam poetry or videography or protests or um, writing letters to senators and it's just there, there's so many different ways and routes you can take and it, you should really play to whatever you're passionate about it should be, very much be an individualized process um, and um, that that's it's just really incredible to see how so many different people invest themselves in so many different ways into something like this and so it's something that's so much greater than oneself and it's really funny because advocates and activists you wouldn't do this kind of work you wouldn't put so much of yourself into this if you didn't believe that somehow you were making some type of change um and some kind of difference and that's really beautiful that um people believe in their capacity to create change and that's why they're doing this mm -hmm.